Everybody, hello, hi, hi, hello. Welcome to the weekend. Here we are on Saturday. It is a very, very sunny Saturday outside today, which is nice to see. We've been having a lot of storms lately, so it's nice to see the clouds clear. Good to see everybody. Co Bean, Chaotic, Red, Luda, Ramens. Hey, yo, Cap. Hey, Lion and Bruno, Lazy. Thank you everyone for donating to the non-dominant hand art stream. That is our current community challenge. I'm very excited to hit that goal. Do a little bit of painting with my weird hand. Even thinking about it makes me shiver, which is probably a good sign that it's going to be a wild time. Simi Ann, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad you were able to catch it live. Right here at the beginning, too. We're just about to get started. Gonna switch it over here in just a second. Good afternoon to you as well, to Lewis. Hope y'all are doing well today. I'm feeling good, feeling creative. Hey, Gizmo. Got all my brushes lined up. I've got pencils. <clears throat> I 
Gotta find my, oh, there it is. Earth tone pencil. Ah, well, thanks for lurking, Pluto. Hopefully you can stop by a little later on, but if not, it was good to see you. I'm gonna make sure that all of my brushes are primed with water so that they're ready to go. Hey. Okay. Here we are on the desk, back again with another vertical orientation. I've got my reference up in the Discord, exclamation Discord in chat if you would like to join the Discord, uh, where I like to post my art references that I look at when I'm working on a piece. Today, it's a photograph that I took of a very lovely reddish, brownish gradient leaf structure in my garden. So I'm really looking forward to working on those tones. The sunlight was shining down, and it was sort of back shadowed by a lot of the hedge behind it. I think it's going to be a really, really fun piece to uh, work on some light. You know I love painting light. Moody Cat, hello. Welcome in. Right, so... Make sure I've got all of my stuff in order, which I seem to here. And let's have a good time. So my approach for this piece is pretty much going to be figuring out where the light hits and then working around those areas. Uh, lately, you'll know that I've been approaching things very similarly to straight watercolor, even though I'm using gouache. And by the way, I've got all of my tubes out. We're going to use Windsor & Newton again today. For the longest time, I've been using that jelly gouache, but now today I'm finally going back to my old crinkle tubes because I miss them. I miss I miss all of these colors. I miss my turquoise. I miss my opera rose. I'm looking forward to uh, getting back into these little friends. So I've got all of those laying there uh, in a big pile. But the first thing I want to do is sketch out the structure here. So the main structure of this is just the stalk that goes up through and then the leaves that come off of that. And oh, how I love to draw a leaf. Now these leaves down here are going to be the most Important to my eye, at least the things that caught my eye, actually, as I was looking out the window today. I saw this one leaf in particular, so I'm going to take my time with this one. I was just catching the full-on rays of the sun. And it was very striking because it's partially in shadow, partially in light. And the shadows aren't completely dark. They have this sort of effused light quality where they're taking on the red from above, uh, sort of reflected light. And because of that, the shadows are like more of a warm purple, which I really like quite a bit.
A lot of really fun sharp turns in these leaf shapes. Which I always appreciate because my sketching style is very abrupt. I do like a lot of jagged turns when I'm sketching, even if there are no jagged turns in the subject. I like adding in a lot of weird juts and angles for interest. And then the stock continues down here. And then we have more leaves, but it's more of a gradient, sort of a yellow green. This is another thing I really like about the subject as it starts yellow and red on top, these bright warm colors, especially against that subdued cool green in the background, the dark uh, shadows back there. And then this also sort of starts transitioning into like a dull blue green as the leaves go down toward the ground. And again, I'm just sort of sketching in where the shadows are. So this area is the shadow, and then there's little bits of light peeking through. Yeah, nature is a wonderful, wonderful tool to study from, mostly because, you know, it's always there, fingers crossed, um, and it's so dynamic, always, like the, the sunlight will change throughout the day, that's why I love plain air, it's sort of uh, studying in hard mode, because the light is always shifting on you, you don't get those tight sort of studio lighting controls. Something I always really loved about figure drawing, live figure drawing, is that the subject is moving. Like, they'll hold a pose for a certain amount of time, but it's not forever. And you have to be ready to adjust to that. Hey, Bachi. Okay, the stem continues down here. We've had a string of bad luck recently in terms of harsh weather and it being just too hot. Like, it sort of alternates between way too hot to go outside and way too stormy to go outside. So I'm really psyched for when we get a nice stretch of medium days um, because I would like to go back out to the trail and do some more painting. And it doesn't have to be perfect conditions, because I've definitely done... Sometimes, actually, plain air is really good when there's a slight mist in the air. Because your paint is less likely to dry up too fast. Okay, now for the background. There's a string of medium tone that goes across here. It's the hedge in the background. And then a tree over here. Now the background details are going to be very fuzzy. I'm just putting blobs of tone in behind because I want to capture the main structure, the light, the feeling, the crispness of the edges. 
So everything back here is just going to be blobs of tone to offset how light those values are. But I'm also going to include some medium details. So here there's a, a much closer plant that actually has some leaf shapes that I want to cut in sharply. But I don't want to focus too much on those shapes. Again, lighter shapes up here. Okay. So this is our starting point. I'm actually going to begin with some very, very loose light color over the whole thing just to get a sense of that light. Hey, Stove, how's it going? Good morning. <clears throat> it's really early where you are. All right, so I'm going to get a few different colors, but the most important thing I want right now is warm and cool. So I can go pretty basic with those. Uh, I'm going to get some white on the palette. I've got some zinc. And a little bit of permanent. For my light and dark, I'm going to use my primary blue. And then a little bit of cobalt turquoise light. Oh, actually, I should dip into my old tube first. Use these in order. So cobalt turquoise light, and then for my warm, I want to go with something... I'm going with colors that are a little unnatural. So cobalt turquoise is a very bright... Uh, blue color that you don't often find in in like normal like sky ground colors. You'll find it in gemstones certainly, but I want this to feel heightened in a way. So for the warm, I'm also going into uh, Opera Rose, which is a bright pink that is very hard to mix to, but you can get it straight out the tube. And then just a little bit of raw sienna. So I'm going for very saturated colors, but I'm going to use them. Oh, I actually need the tube squeezer. It's been a while since I've had the tube ringer out on stream. Here it is. But the raw sienna uh, tends to solidify in the tube, so I'm going to use the tube ringer. There we go. Yeah, raw John Cena. Okay, so now I have what I need to put a wash over the whole thing. And I'm going to start incredibly light with my flat brush. I'm going to grab some white. Just a little bit of that sienna and make sure that it's a very wet mixture. some warmth down here in the lower area because I know a lot of this upper and middle area is going to be cool colors and I want them to be because that's going to offset all the warm colors that I have in the foreground so this this plant structure is going to be very red very glowy 
And in order to really contrast that, I want the other colors to be very cool up here. And vice versa, on the plant, it's going to gradually get cooler and cooler, uh, sort of a muted green by the time it gets to the bottom leaves here. And because of that, I want some warmth in the background. So I'm going to mix in some of that rose. And these colors don't actually appear in the reference image, but I'm trying to go for a feeling more than a one-to-one -one translation. And again, I just love how weird and unnatural this is. But it'll all kind of work out. I'll keep the strokes random because it's just a bunch of leaves back there, so I want that sort of random texture anyway. Okay, and now we'll pull in our cool colors. Very, very extremely pale blue. And that'll be our starting point. I don't want any white up here. And knocking out the white of the paper tone is going to give us control over what areas we want to be light and what areas we want to be dark. I had started the idea of the painting off very watercolor focused, but now I'm pretty much just going in like a gouache painting. Old habits die hard when I'm using my classic art supplies. So I'm blending it down in the middle, taking the cool color down into the warm color. And not going for any particular effect, mostly it's just trying to create a gradient between the two colors and also get rid of the white of the paper. Interspersing a little bit of the blue down here in the pink. And then I'll do vice versa. Just using a very, very little amount. Hey, Evie, how's it going? Yeah, we're doing some happy little trees today. Now I'm bringing some of that pink back up into the blue area. It's kind of going back and forth. Okay, so now we have this sort of bright glow between the top and the bottom. And on top of this, we can start working in our other tones. I'm not going to bother with any of the dark shadows in the background yet. I'm going to be doing negative painting around the shapes to actually fill those in. So to start, we're going to be working on our foreground. Now to do that, we're going to need some different... Well, actually, let me just try going in with the opera and the raw sienna. That might get us to where we need to get. It's like pretty darn good. Thank you. 
Now to give a sense of realism to a leaf, you gotta kinda jump around your colors a little bit here. And not just stick to one. So I'm mixing in a bit more white and yellow on these leaves up here. And then kinda just going back and forth between the two colors. There's spots where it's more red, spots where it's more yellow. Hello, uh, I did my avatar in Photoshop. I just drew a couple of uh, GIFs or GIFs if you prefer. Um, and then I used a tutorial. If you go on YouTube and you type in PNG tuber, which I can do here in the chat just so you know how I spelled it. Um, there's a lot of very easy tutorials to follow to set it up. It takes like five minutes. It's very easy. No problem. It is Opera Rose. Yes, we are using that bright, beautiful color of Opera Rose, which I've been missing very much. There's some lovely magentas in the Jelly Gouache set, but there's nothing that quite gets to that light level of an Opera Rose. So beautiful. So just as usual, we're painting in the light areas first and then we'll be dropping in much darker values over top of those. One of those things that makes it easier than it seems to get some of these tones. Because you don't have to really worry too much about staying in lines or anything like that, especially where dark overlaps light. But I do need to be very careful about this area here, where this area needs to stay very, very bright. It's actually the brightest spot pretty much in the, thing, in the whole thing. Because unlike in the reference photo, I actually don't want this area up here to be blown out with a lot of bright highlights. I want to keep it way more subdued. Almost like there's a dark cloud passing overhead in the distance. Because I really want to push the lights of the plant itself. As the plant goes down, again, those tones are going to shift to a cooler color. So I actually need to go from red down the spectrum into yellow. So I'm going to be leaning heavier on the sienna. We mix that color together and go pretty heavily on the white here.
I'm cutting around the shadows again. And these shadows are going to be quite dark. But I need to be careful at this point to keep the light spots crisp. I'm just cutting around them with a lighter color before I go in with a much darker shadow color. Almost like a kind of coronal halo. And in the shadows, we're going to be seeing a lot more purples. I'm going to mix in some of this primary blue, some of the turquoise. Mix that up to a pale green. Especially for these back leaves here. I just love setting in these colors, especially when they're constantly shifting and moving from one value and one tone to another. It almost creates a rainbow if you're able to find a little space to slot in all the colors. So we've got the reds down to the yellows to the greens, and then by the time it gets to the bottom, the blues. And even though it's not, you know, blatantly obvious in the reference image, when you're painting, you have the power to kind of push those ideas forward and make them more prominent. And that is a nice power to have. So as it goes further along here, it mixes in a little bit more blue. So we'll just subtly mix in slightly more. By the time it gets to the other side, it almost turns into a purple. So I want to keep that in mind as I go across the leaves here. The 
The most exciting thing on working on a piece like this <clears throat> is knowing that in a little while, once I'm done the main shapes, and I start putting in those darker tones in the background and cutting around, the whole thing is just gonna push forward and feel like it's glowing, which is very exciting. Take some of the water out of the brush. And the less water that's in there, the darker and more opaque the paint will be. Okay, now up here should be dry enough that I can do shadows, the shadow layer over top. Down here I was pretty much doing entirely shadows, like cutting in shadows from the jump because I had laid in that flat layer of warm color. But now, I can go in with a shadow tone and paint opaquely over top. Draw in those, because there's some pretty deep shadows up here. And since it's in the warm area of the leaves, I'm mostly going to be using warm colors, so... Mix together this opera. It's pretty much the same, the same color combinations I used before, but with less white and with less water. I'm going to take a lot of the water out of my brush and just work in those combinations. Trying always to tip the scale toward warmth. And also using a bit more saturation than is in the reference because that's just how I feel when I look at this. I want it to be kind of a heightened reality. 
Okay. Thank you for the gentle rainstorm, Lion. We've had so many storms recently that for a second I was like, it can't possibly be storming again. It's sunny outside right now. But I do still love to hear it. It's so weird to see, like, the light and the shadow and then this <laughs> this structure of the leaf back here because it's lit through, you know, the leaves allow light to shine through them. But in the actual picture, there's dark space back here and I have to keep that in mind when I'm working on this because it'll feel wrong until it looks right, you know. but it is almost time to start laying in that background, which is going to be very satisfying. Okay, so let me grab some white. Very, very, very little water 
as well. Alright, the stretch timer. I always miss something. Alright, let's take a stretch then. Stretch, hydrate, the health of your back demands it. Right you are, right you are. Okay, the stretch timer has officially commenced for real. Let's get back to it. And lay down some darks in the background here. Now, when we're laying down these dark colors in the back, we don't want to just go for the darkest color. That is a bad direction to go in. Instead, what we want to do is to create a sense of light shining down in the back. I'm going to grab some colors to assemble a green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. We're going to create sort of a glowing green. Okay. But all the while, we'll be cutting in behind the foreground element. So I'll be starting with basically the same idea that we had at the start, which is just a lot of light and a lot of blue. But now it'll be darker blue. It's going to be like back here. We'll have a tree. And then we'll have kind of the indication of another tree behind a house. There's going to be a lot of tones working with each other. Now it's mostly blue, even though I'm technically painting the shadow of trees because atmospheric perspective means that it's mostly sky color that you see in the distance. All of the air particles just getting in the way. I'm going to keep all of these shapes pretty vague. Because again, what I'm trying to do is create kind of a rack focus. So I want the subject in the foreground to be the most in focus thing. And then everything else is in service of that. So the details back here don't matter. What matters is the tone and the value. 
So like there's a house back here, but I'm not painting the house. I'm just painting like the vague notion of the house. And then like the car back here and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, bam, some incredibly bright yellows. Those are going to sparkle here because these are mid-ground leaves. And I'll be cutting around these as well. And the wonderful thing about painting from a reference picture is you're in control. Like, you don't have to do exactly what you see in the paint or in the photo reference. Because there's doubtless going to be a ton of things where you're looking at it and you go, I don't really like the way that looks. And you can change that. Keep what you want, throw away the rest. That's the whole thing with references. And the main reason why when most professionals are working, they have many, many, many references. They'll have a reference for lighting, a reference for texture, a reference for silhouette, you know, all those kind of things, because they're like assimilating the ideas, um, the feelings, the shapes. It's very important to do so. I'm dropping a whole bunch of this light green tone back here. And then just like we did initially, I'm going to gradate those. So I'm going to get a little bit of blue.
Ooh, stretch time. Reset that timer and take a stretch. <laughs> nice to see the chat being so active today. Glad all y'all are coming and hanging out with me. I'm very much uh, vibing while I work on this piece. Sorry for not talking too much, but I hope you're all doing well. Working a lot of those really deep, dark shadows. Which was kind of the original idea of the picture. Is to have those dark shadows really cut around the figure up here. For those who don't know, I recently started putting all the VODs up on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EiffelArt, conveniently enough. Uh, and I'm thinking about maybe doing some bespoke content over there as well, eventually. Although it does take enough time that uh, I would have to figure it out beforehand. <laughs> but basically what I'm planning on doing is taking some of the VODs, cutting them up um, as far as like the process goes, sort of 
uh, piece by piece, planning through specific ones, some of the more big, ambitious paintings that I've done on stream, and uh, doing an, an uh, what are they called, narration? I was almost going to call it an overdub, but basically guided narration so that you can get a way better understanding of what I was thinking as I was doing step to step to step. And it would be a much more condensed idea. Thought that would be kind of a cool idea for a YouTube video. Because I'm definitely not much of a straight up teaching type. I know that a lot of people on YouTube do tutorials and things like that, which is very cool. But that's not really how my brain works necessarily. I'm much more of a demonstrator, as you can tell from me sitting here quietly and painting. But if I'm looking at my own piece, I can definitely describe what I was thinking when I was doing any particular step. And I think that might be pretty helpful for people who learn the same way that I do, which is by watching and with a little bit of interior monologue. Thank you, Floor and Captain. It's very appreciated. Having a lot of fun working on this one. Working on the values between the background and the foreground, trying to capture the focus and the essence of the picture is always a great challenge and very, very satisfying when it all starts to come together. There's that constant back and forth when you're working on a picture like this where I don't want to make the background suddenly pitch black, you know? Like, that certainly would bring a lot of focus, but I don't want to immediately go that route because then it would kind of diminish the overall atmosphere of the piece. So instead, I got to work my way up to it gradually. It's a bit of a, a slow game. Got this power pole in the background here. Thanks for all the gift subs, LMAO. <laughs> well, thank you, Stove, for subscribing. I really appreciate that very much. can't tell if the subscriber goal thingy is just permanently screwed up because it never seems to update or maybe it's just really really slow to update 
But for some reason, it hasn't been working as well lately. Yeah, that's the beauty of the sub message. If you subscribe, it says funny stuff through a computer. I'm going to research alternatives. This one is through um, Streamlabs itself. So every every time you like Google, you know, widget for tracking, blah, 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 they all recommend this one. But it just has not been working very well the past several streams, which is a shame because we do art giveaways when we get to 50 subs. <laughs> so uh, it should work so that we can do more giveaways. But I will uh, look into, or alternatively, if any of you know uh, of one that does work or alternatives to the Streamlabs one, I would love to hear about it.
Hey, Zoe, how's it going? How y'all doing today? Hi, Raiders. Welcome in, welcome in. Just working on a little guy today. Thank you very much. I'm doing quite well. It's a beautiful sunny day here. And I saw this little leafy friend in my garden today and decided I had to paint them. You know how it is.
how long until the next stretch? Uh, I do 30 minute increments. Uh, so we've got about five minutes until the next stretch, which will probably be our last one for the day. But we'll keep going a little bit past the stretch because I do want to finish up some other details on this. Let's clean up the palette a bit.
Ooh, there goes the stretch timer. All right, I'm just gonna put one line on this. Okay. Stretch it up. Good night, Redbird.
That's going to do it for this piece. So let's go ahead and take that tape off. That's always the most fun part. some good clean lines today. Beautiful. I think I actually need to get some more tape before our next stream. I'm running incredibly low. <laughs> you can see it's like paper thin. I think I've got maybe, I don't even know if I've got a whole other painting uh, of tape on here. So let's take a trip to the store and pick up some more. Let's take this off the background here. Give it a sign. Signing pen. Ha! Right beside me, turns out. Today is the 24th. Month is almost over. we go. A happy little plant from my garden. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and hanging out with me today. As always, thank you for the follows and the subs. I will, uh, right after the stream, actually, I'm going to try to hunt down a better sub tracker because the one in Streamlabs is bad. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Keeps me going, keeps the art supplies coming in. I uh, can't do it without you, literally. Uh, and our next stream is going to be Tuesday, Gouache Tuesday coming up. We're going to be doing some more painting. Uh, I'll probably get the jelly gouache back out again. Maybe do some sketchbook studies. Uh, maybe, I mean, who knows? It could be just about anything, honestly. Um, and then Thursday and Saturday after that. So I will see you then. Please be well. Stay cool. Stay hydrated, uh, have a great evening slash morning slash whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you on Tuesday. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>